Celebrating Jesus with a shout. Somebody, anybody, give the Lord a shout of praise in the room. Hold it, hold it. Now, Daddy said something last Sunday. There are some of you, your cars will not pass this month. Amen. Your cars will not pass this year. Amen. You know that expectation. Amen. I want you to give it a shout. I saw you are receiving it now. Somebody scream. I feel like shouting. Everyone at Jericho, around your blessings this month, somebody scream and bring it down. Your neighbor, neighbor, this is not the normal me. I am shouting it on my breakthrough. Somebody scream! It is me 
get to. The sound of a warrior is with a shout and a confused noise. Somebody, if you're a warrior in this room, somebody scream! Yeah. And I say, man, I stop, oh. And I say, man, I stop. one the last one if your neighbor is louder than you you are wrong if your neighbor jump past you you are wrong somebody are gonna scream for your season of complete restoration somebody scream somebody scream for coldness am I talking to somebody I don't know perfection for coldness in this house there is evidence of grace in this house there is evidence of miracles to Jesus this morning. What God cannot do does not exist. He has perfected everything for us. Just lift up your hands to Jesus and say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you that I'm not among the heathens. Thank you because I am among the privileged ones to be called your sons and daughters. I am a joint head with Christ. Lift up your voice and just say, Jesus, thank you. Lift up your voice and just adore him. Only you are God. Equal. Equal. Only you. Every other king comes and goes, but you are equal, equal. There is nothing impossible for you. Protect like you do. Nobody. Who can pro? Who 
give me victories like you do oh. who bless my hand walk like you do like you kayadabaha e kuwe mei that is your name oh. e kuwe mei that is what we call you I never see, I never see, I never see any, see, I never see, I never see anyone like you, I never see, I never see anyone like you, I never see, I never see. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you. We thank you for your marvelous works in our lives. You have led us to the month of May. And today is the first Sunday of May. You have begun this month with us with the enrichment of your grace and mercy and faith. May being the month that carry the power of number five. And because it carries the power of number five, the Shane family of the power of five from you shall rest upon your people. Yeah. Such family treasures of grace which is attached to five. Mercy which is attached to five. Faith which is attached to five, and many others, O oh Lord, release it upon your people today. Yeah. And let your name be glorified yeah. as your people have impactful service and worship with you in Jesus' name. Yeah. You may be seated. Listen carefully by the grace of God. During the week, the Lord spoke so many things, quickening and stirring to the spirit, soul, and body, to heart and mind. One of them is, I am contented. Let's say that together. I am contented. And upon that, we shall bring out so many treasures when you are content. And you cannot be content for nothing. So we shall discover the mysteries of contentment. Another word the Lord gave to me, I am confident. Somebody say I'm confident. All right. Now we are looking into the message which is titled, The Mysteries of 
discovering the great gain. You and I have the treasure of the great gain. If we can know it, Exploit it. First Timothy chapter six, verse six. First Timothy six, six. It says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's say that together. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So some of the things that the Lord made known to me because I am contented. So I said to myself, you will say to yourself, I am contented. I am satisfied. I am glad. I am joyful. I am grateful to the good God. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. My Lord, my King, and Savior, I will obey, love, be faithful, and serve you in the spirit and in truth forever. Godliness with contentment is great gain. When you discover it, when you realize it, this declaration is what exudes out of your life on daily basis. The scripture says, in his time, he made all things beautiful. In your time, God has made all things beautiful. Now, every one of us is a peculiar treasure. You must recognize that. Every one of us is a peculiar treasure. And that is why anyone that discovers, discovers it, like David, will say, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Marvelous are thy works, O God. There is no one among the millions and billions and trillions of people, there is no one like you. You didn't hear that. If in this congregation and those who are listening to me, there is somebody that is just the same in terms of gifting, in terms of glory content, in terms of color, of royalty, of nobility, of certain specialization, if anyone is just like you, you can take that person up. If God does not repeat himself, listen to me, God does not repeat himself. Even in color, we have shades of color. When one color comes out within a brand of color, 
you will see that there are different glories. The chains of glory. You are special and peculiar. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar, special person. You have a head that no other person has. Whether you are tall and whether you are short, fat, slim, you are a unique person in the hands of God. And the uniqueness that God put in you imparts another. You have something that I don't have. Are you listening? I have something that you don't have. That is why we come to God's market business. When we come to God's market business like this, your blessing imparts my blessing. There is something I yearn for, which I don't have. But by the time we meet together, you impart my life. Iron sharpen it. Iron. Hello? 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 Now, are you content? If you are content, raise up your hand and say, I am content. Say, I'm contented. I am satisfied. But you see, God does not want you to be content for nothing. So, what gives you contentment? Why are you satisfied? Why are you content? That is why I'm going to break down and peace is done by my calling so that your eyes can be open to the reason why you are contented. Hallelujah. Now, remember that there are tools, instruments that God put in you which you can use in assessing in evaluating the degree of contents of glory within you. And that's why there is a word, a key word in the scripture that says, behold. What is it? Behold. Have you ever dream, dreamt of beholding yourself? The scripture says it's necessary for us to behold ourselves in the mirror of God so that we can see the image of his glory and be changed from one glory to another glory. From righteousness to righteousness. From faith to faith. Don't stop in your ascending to become the full man, the complete man, the perfect man. Don't stop somewhere. There are rungs in the ladder. And when you want to go up to your heavenly father, he wants you to take all the garments of the glory uh, and put it on yourself one by one. Oh, glory be to God. That is why he has given to us uh, economists will call it insatiable ones. He has given to us, if you use one cloth uh, repeatedly, you will soon be fed up with it. If you, you, if you eat one soup, you will soon be fed up of it. So there are varieties. Are you following? Variety is the spice of life. God is here to equip you to overflowing. Life is continuous desire. May your desire and hunger never quench in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Now, when God created Adam, uh, put yourself when God created Adam. When he created Adam, Adam in two dimensions. One was created. The other, was, the other one wasn't created. The other one was birthed by God. God gave birth to the spirit Adam who was in him. Psalm 90 says, Thou hast been our dwelling place before the world began, before the foundations of the world, before you created everything, before you created the earth, the universe, God has been our dwelling place. So which part of you was dwelling in God, your spirit man? Jesus said that your spirit man was a gift from the Father that he gave to him, Jesus. He said, uh, those you have given unto me, the sons that you have given unto me to conceive of and incubate, <laughs> to transfer my gene into them, I and those children that you have given to me to give birth to, we are for signs and for wonders. Don't allow your signs and wonders to pass you by. You must collect your signs and wonders that make you to stand out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God birthed the spirit of Adam, but before he will birth the spirit of Adam, because a woman will not give birth until there is a, what I will call a terra firma, a foundation. If a woman is conceived, she can't give birth to nothingness, to nothing. There must be a place to bet the child. Is that correct? So, which means that the conception is a different aspect. The betting, the giving birth, the delivery is another. So, God formed man of the dust. He formed, created Adam and Eve from this uh, dust of the ground upon which he will bet the spirit. So when God formed man of the dust, the soul and the body, they were lifeless. And then, uh, when he has formed them, though lifeless, what will give them power and life is the spirit. So he, he breathed the spirit of man into him. And God breathed upon the nostrils of Adam, and Adam became. You are about to become something better. Amen. I say you are about to become something better. Amen. You are about to begin to imagine better things. Amen. You are about to begin to see better things. Amen. You are about to handle and to touch better things. You are about to see better things. You are about to go into the realm of glory, the realm of power. You are about to speak better things. You have been given a tongue and a mouth to decree things. You are about to prophesy to the things you want to bet in your environment. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Your life is about to turn around for good. Now, listen, listen, so that we can now know how to say, Oh Lord, I'm grateful. Oh Lord, I praise you. Adam was on the ground, lifeless. God gave him eyes to see, but the eyes could not see yet. Hello? 
He gave him ears to hear, but the ear could not hear yet. He gave him mouth to speak, and the mouth could not speak yet. He gave him nostrils to breathe, but they could not breathe yet. He gave him power to feel his, his environment, but he could not feel them yet. But when God appeared, and breathed for the first time, say for the first time, into Adam, and God by grace, say grace, He said in his time he made all things beautiful. All things have been made beautiful. Any power that is blinding you to knowing them, today I crush that power. You shall see the glory of God. You shall hear wonderful things of God. Now God breathed into him. And uh, Adam... Touch your physical eyes if you have eyes. Is that all the eyes you have? The sins you were given birth to by the all wise God, he said, the, the wise man's eyes are on his head, in his head. So don't joke with your mind. They are powerful eyes. Are you following? Don't joke with your heart. They are powerful eyes. Don't joke with your spirit. There is a powerful eye. Now when Adam woke up, God breathed into him. For the first time, can you travel there along with me? Are you there? He has not seen anything before. For the first time when God breathed into him, he saw the garden of Eden that had been prepared so wonderful, tree of life that if he wants to eat, he will not die, was there. The river of life Scripture calls it the river of God. It was by the tree because the two go together. Hallelujah. Every beautiful thing that you can think of. In his time, he made all things what? Beautiful. 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 And if you are the seed of Adam, Say, I thank you, Jesus. Which means you can connect. Say, I can connect. Good. We had the first Adam and the last Adam. But now we connect to the last Adam because that one is more powerful than the first Adam. It's more glorious than the first Adam. For the first time when Adam eyes were open. He saw beauty and glory. He saw wonderful things that it was impossible for him to imagine. And you know that? That's just a little thing. God said, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard what the Lord has prepared for Samson, for me alone. And God didn't give you did he give you? Did he give you? Did he give you? And the devil does not love when you begin to know and to see good things. Adam saw, Adam saw, Adam saw in his environment in the garden of Eden. He saw the glory of God. The glory of God was upon the earth. But there is an extent to which your physical, natural eyes can see. If I ask you now, you can only see within the uh, vicinity, the, uh, the immediate environment. 
if I ask you to see with your physical eyes at Abba, Abba is in a, a great distance from here. Can your physical eye go there? Can it go there? So you can, there are eyes natural that can see are within the immediate environment. But God gave to man a telescopic eye. What is it? A spiritual telescopic eye. It is called faith. What is it? Faith. That you can see beyond the natural environment. So after the natural man, the one that was created from the dust of the earth has finished the scene. North, south, east, and west, there was an eye that was to see. And David will say, along with me and those who want to see, open my eyes that I may behold glorious things out of thy law. The law of God is not different from his word. So the law of God is his word. Open my eyes that I may see glorious things out of your word. And do you know where the world is seated? Do you know where the world began? So that takes us to the book of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the world. And the world was with God. And the world was God. In him was life. And the life of man came out of it. And the life was a light of man. Now, Psalm 18 will say, lighten my eyes. Let's say that together. Lighten my eyes. Ephesians will say, that the eyes of your understanding, I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be opened to behold the riches of his glory, that you would know the different contents of glory that God has given to you, that you should comprehend. What is it? Comprehend. Comprehend. When you are about to comprehend, you understand the whole thing. Comprehend. The depth, the height, the length, and the breadth of the love of Christ and of the riches of Christ. Because if you comprehend, now back to open my eyes. One man from, from the natural has seen, but his sin is limited. Are you following? The other one, the spiritual man, he said, I will look up unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? <laughs> I will look up unto the hills. Now, remember uh, Psalm 82, 5 and 6 talks about. They know not. So today, say today. I shall know as I should know. I should know, I am going to know, I'm going to understand, I'm going to have wisdom to control and to manage in dominion and in power what I know. Because they are your power that will make you to fly. Knowledge is power. He said they know not, neither do they understand. And the problem with some people, they can have knowledge. You can go to the university and have knowledge and have your bachelor, your master's, and your PhD. But the problem has been application. What is it? Because if you have knowledge and you don't understand how to apply the knowledge in various situations, you will still remain like a man without knowledge. They know not, neither do they understand if they even know how to apply the knowledge. 
And that tells you that if you and I have the privilege of going through the school, the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, that when you come out from there with the knowledge we have, we should go into application. Application of knowledge will give you employment. Am I speaking to somebody? Application of who God made you to be is inside you. When you get the right knowledge and the application, you will not be moving up and down like the un unemployed. You will know what God asks you to do because you are a peculiar person. He said, we are God's workmanship. Say, I am the workmanship of God. Created in Christ Jesus. To the praise and glory of God. Hallelujah. So this man, began to look up. <clears throat> now, your spiritual eyes, your faith eyes, which is spiritually telescopic, has power in going up, in ascending from one height to another height, to another height, to another height, until he missed where uh, he was given birth from. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be what? Thy name. Now, if you don't know him, you won't hallow him. If you don't know him, you will not honor him. I don't know whether you are following. Our Father who art in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be thy name. I am in poverty here. Thy kingdom come. I know that I cannot fail in anything I do if I do it according to your will. Let your will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. All the days are not the same. David said that, O oh Lord, Help me and let me have the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to number my what? Days. Number has power to give you additions and multiplication. Number, if you handle it in a wrong manner, can give you minus. I don't know whether you're fooling. So know how to positively number your life so that you will not diminish. <laughs> because you, according to the mentality of the operation of your mind and number, it sustain you up there. Thou shall be the head and not the tail. God is looking for people who have head to imagine and go and remain on top. You shall be above only and not beneath. Because if you are not above and head, you shall be ruled by those who have head. The body is under the head. And the reason why the, the head is above on top of the body is to rule the body. I don't, are you following? Are you following? Are you following? And what you use in looking up is not your body. Your body doesn't have the, the qualification to look up. It is your head that has to look up. Are you following? I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Now, we are going into the breakdown of... The reason why we, I am content. I gave you a word. The best treasurable of life is godliness of endless life. The best treasure you can get out of life is godliness. Say godliness. All right. And this godliness, you know, when you become godly, eventually you shall be rewarded with endless life. 
you will have everlasting life. I say you will have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And scripture asks us to behold. Say, I will behold. I behold, as you know, that we do, we do exegesis, it breaks down. Because words are later put together, alphabet put together to form meanings. B. You are going to become somebody now. Be hold. Be hold. Which means you can put yourself in a position to hold. Say in the name of Jesus, I will hold my God given destiny. Behold means so much and so many things. To be able to comprehend, to see things in their order as they are set. Behold. Now, if God said behold, which means a man can be beholding the wrong thing, say in the name of Jesus. From today, all the wrong things I'm beholding, I do away with them. Because the fact is that whatever your mind behold will be attracted to your mind. Whatever your heart behold will be attracted to what? Your heart. So, your mind is a repository, a banker that banks what you behold. If you want to have good treasures in your mind, hello, go after good things. And put their seed in your mind. And think about them. Whatsoever is good. Whatsoever is of faith, of hope, of sanctification. He said, think on these things. Hello? Now, behold. It depends upon what you are having now within you. It is as a result of what you have been beholding. You can behold negative, corrupt pictures and correct, co uh, corrupt attitude, and they can now open doors to flow into you, and the image of God in you will be corrupted. Say in the name of Jesus. I will not behold corruptible things. I want godliness to stay in me. Hallelujah. All right. When God said behold, which means you can be a holder. And you can be a stakeholder. You can determine what you will get by your power of beholding. Is that correct? As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is full stop. Who you are, who you are, and who you were, and who you are going to be, is as a result of what you have been thinking, what you have been imagining. Now, thinking in your mind, I told some time ago, remember if you are mindful, say mindful, mind is mining. Are you following? Do you know miners? When miners begin to mind, they are actually mining. There is something in this ground. I want to concentrate on it. And I want to excavate it. So mining, mining is mining. Whatever thing you concentrate on, that is in your mind, and you continue to think and imagine about it, you are actually mining and bringing those substance in your multitude to form a mountain. That is why the wise man will not read dirty books. Hello? The wise man who wants to grow and 
overcome, we read books that edify. Books that what? Edify. Not books that demote, that breaks down your system. And you and I have been called to build. So in the name of Jesus, I must build my house. I can only help you to teach you how to build your house. But I cannot build your house for you. Every man shall build his own house. Is that correct? 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 So how many builders are here? If you are a builder, you are a builder here, raise up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. And those who refuse to build, if you are not a builder, just raise up your hand and say, thank you. If you don't build, you will become a beggar. This is the ministry of beggars. They refuse to build their own house. And if you refuse to build your own house, your house will be empty. Your house will not even shelter you because you didn't build a shelter for yourself. And for those who build their house, they know that house is not just built like that. Houses are departmentalized. Let's say that together. Houses are departmentalized. They have rooms. There are parlor. There are places and places and places. And different treasures are kept in relevant rooms and compartments. Hello? Hello? So you can look at your house. Say, I will look at my house. What is the structure of my house? And what goods have I put in my house that I can look at my house and say, Oh, glory be to God. This is how God designed me to be in my peculiarity. Now I can see that I have this, I have this, and this, and that. Oh, glory be to God. I am content. Because you will never be content if you are not able to assess, to discover the material you have. Even though they tell you, say, I am content, you nod head and say, I am content. And you didn't know how to I discover, unveil this contentment for you to know it by yourself, you will see that the words you spoke is in vain. You shall never speak vain words in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when Adam began to look with his eyes of faith in his mind, the divine telescopic eye, ah, he said, the, there is a power of looking beyond the physical eyes. We look at things that the eye, physical eyes cannot see. Hello? Hello? The, you see, don't limit yourself to the physical, which you know the names here and there, and you call them. There, is, there are things that are up there that the physical do not know. Are you following? So if you have your eyes, you'll see the invisible. Say from today, I will see the invisible. The invisible exists more than the visible. Through faith, we understand that the walls we are framed by the word of God so that the things which we see, we are not made of things that are seen. And if your eyes is able to look up to see that there are existing power, substances, glory there, which the physical eye came short of, and now you want to bring those invisible down. 
these invisible that are up there, hey, ah, uh, my bank account is down. I don't know whether you are following. And therefore, uh, everything I have physically came from there. Therefore, I command you in the name of Jesus, those things that my physical eyes cannot see, I, but my spiritual eyes are seeing them. I command you to come. That's what scripture says, calling those things which be not as though they were. And the things that are existing there, if you try to see, God told Abraham, look to the south, to the north, to the east and the west. Whatsoever you can see with your eyes, you shall possess it. Is somebody following this morning? Is somebody following this morning? Is somebody following this morning? Uh, you, will, you cannot have a car without seeing the car. You cannot have a good husband, a good wife without seeing it first. You must cash it. I don't know whether you are following. I work in Nigeria Bank 16 and a half years. And by the spirit of faith, uh, knowing what God put in me that will manifest, uh, I was calling those things. I was on a salary grade, and I, did, I couldn't buy a car at the time because the prices of cars started rising from 7,000 then to about 10,000, from 10,000 to 15,000, from 15,000 to 25,000, from 25,000, and on and on they were climbing. They are still climbing today. I said they are still climbing today. But there was somebody around and say, no matter how you are climbing, I will get hold of you. You are coming down. I am fixing it. So I went to, when I went to the bank, I mean, to, yes, to the bank to go and walk, and others have gotten their car. I love God. I am a giver. And the money as a senior officer that I was receiving, when I received for seven years, I couldn't have money to myself. God would tell me, buy shoe for such a person, buy dress for such a person, buy this for such a person. Myself and my wife, we are going hungry. Not because there was no money. The money that was there, I so love God that I give it to people. And now, if I have money, some money with me, instead of buying food with it, I will use it in buying spiritual books that will increase me. Are you following? As I'm doing this, even though we are suffering in the flesh, but I was building myself, my wife, and the children. Love faileth not. Let's say that together. Love faileth not. So after some time, they will ask me, Samson, where is your car? I said, I have a car. Say, where is it? <laughs> I took him. I took the person and said, see my car. What he was seeing, he couldn't see anything there. But I know my car is there. See the car. My eyes is seeing it. The thing I have ordered for it by faith, it will soon land. Are you following? So they will go and start. I became a laughing stock. He said, that man is crazy. That man is something else. They will go and mock me. But one day, somebody came and said, uh, somebody from uh, Europe has come, and then there is uh, uh, a car, 505, very clean and neat. And the person said, my pastor will have this. And he came to me. The pastor does not have the money to pay for it. How much was it? About 65000 thereabout. Are you following? And the loan they will give to me in the bank will not exceed 15000 at that time. 
by my level. Are you following? So now, now he came and uh, I asked God that my car has come. There was no money. Then God opened ways. Certain gifts were given to me. And within a month plus, I was able to buy the car. And then I drove to uh, my office. And uh, my manager's name was called Kure. And uh, he saw the car parked there. He said, whose car is this? I said, it's my car. Yeah. Do, do you know? He was a Londonian. He was trained in London. And the powerful words that came out of his mouth, he said, this is a testimony. Yeah. He said, this is what? This is a testimony. And now all the mouth of those who were mocking at me, we are short. Hallelujah. I can tell you more and more. I said, I can tell you more and more. Praise the Lord. So Adam's eye that goes up began to see. He saw it is transcendental. It goes up and up. And then he saw that there are Angelic heavens, his eyes were going beyond that. The three angelic heavens. One of them has fallen, which Lucifer was in charge of, and now Satan fallen. But the two remaining one that belongs to uh, angel, Archangel Michael, and then the topmost of the angelic heaven, Archangel Gabriel. The, he began to see them. And then ascended beyond that and enter into the city that is called the New Jerusalem. Hello? 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 And went to that place where his father, Mount Zion, say Mount Zion, the throne of Jesus. He went there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, when dear, and have fellowship. When you have seen the glorious things, you can't condescend to be looking on things here. I don't know whether you are following. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Our natural love of marriage and the excitement we get from marriage cannot be compared. It's, it's weak and beggarly to your marriage with Christ. Are you following? For those who know about certain pleasures in marriage, orgasm will last for a few seconds. But the orgasm in God continues forever and ever. I in you and you in me. I don't know whether you are following. Are you following? In the natural love, when you conduct love to some, something else, it's like you should enter a the, the other sex, the other sex should enter you, but it is beggarly. You are not able to enter. Your whole body is not able to enter. But now, in God, your whole body will enter. God's whole body, when I mean body, from head to toe will enter. Jesus said, the Father in me, I in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. When you get to that realm, of wonderful bliss. Now, the love will call naturally that people are dying for. It will become the old wine. A soured one. I don't know whether you are following. A soured one that you will be longing for. That one that never fades. Are you following? Are you following? It is there 
waiting for you and I to enrichly be blessed with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Behold, you become a beholder. Uh, you are eternal, peculiar, glorious piece of treasurable admiration of impact to others. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you can comprehend complete knowledge, comprehend, evaluate, Assess, you come to full comprehension, evaluation, assessment. And now if you are able to have this with your instrument of assessment of what God put in you, then you will see that you will witness it. Witness. If you are safe, you are a witness. You can know, you are witnessing the life of God in you. Is that correct? You witness it. You feel it. You do what? You feel it. You feel it. Because our high priest has every one of us connected to our feelings. We do not have a high priest who is not touched with the feelings. Whether feelings of joy or feelings of sadness, or feelings of any mood. He is a compassionate God. Whatever we are passing through, God is a God who feels. God laughs. God can be angry. God can rejoice. He said, my rejoicing was with the sons of men in the habitable part of of the earth. May we walk in pleasing God so that God will rejoice at us in the name of Jesus Christ. And when we see that we please God to rejoice, he said the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. If you please God, he will prune you and then God will rejoice and add more strength to you. He dwelleth in the praises of his people. He dwelleth in the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, for us to be able to comprehend, we must witness it. We must feel it. We must experience it. We must experiment it to try it and see how wonderful it is. We must taste it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And when you begin to taste, you will begin, if you taste the goodness of God, you can't close your mouth. You will testify. Hallelujah. You will smell its aroma because you are giving nostrils and uh, the sweet smelling savour of God that you will continue to desire. And you will see with your eyes it delights some pleasures. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Now, there was a complaining prophet that was called Habakkuk. Habakkuk has only three chapters. A complaining prophet. In chapter one, Habakkuk saw the sins and the corruption and the misbehavior and the rebellion and uh, the people God created serving other idols. And yet, he was made, he was called as a prophet of God. So in chapter 1, uh, Habakkuk began to complain. A complaining prophet. The period you have three chapters in your life, the period of, period of complaining shall be over. I say the period of your complaining, of your murmuring shall be over. 
the, the period where you are confused, you don't know why these things are happening, and you are asking God questions, shall be over. He cautioned himself in chapter 2, the complaining prophet, and said, ah, this is not the way I'm supposed to think. I will stay, go to my uh, place and watch and see what the Lord shall say to me when I am rebuked. But God is merciful. God knows that some things we do are born out of ignorance. He will not come with hammer. Are you following? He will not even come with what you thought that you are going to be punished and dealt with. And so Habakkuk went up to stay in his wash. But rather than, than God uh, rebuking him, he said, write down the vision. Can you say you have not seen a good vision that God reveals to you? Can you say you have not had a good dream once in a while? He said, you know the dream I gave to you. Write it down. Don't publish bad dreams. Habakkuk, I call you. Cling to God. Habakkuk means cling to God. Cling to what God said to you. Say in the name of Jesus. I will cling to what God said to me. Amen. And I will neglect and push aside all the multifarious problems up and down, that the devil is bombarding my mind, my soul, my environment with, I will cling unto God, the truth and the life and the way. It's a Habakkuk, write down the vision. Upon tablets, tablets is a heart. If you are saved, God will write his laws in your heart and in your mind. And from the greatest to the least, God is a teacher. He connects, he relates. He says, all shall know me from the greatest to the least. They shall know me. And no one will teach you, this is God, no God. Now, my calling, and the calling of true men of God, is not to, for you to come in this age and be finding out what shall I do? Shall I go or not go? It is only when you have not known God that you can find out from the oracle of God these things. But now, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of what? Glory is in you. The anointing is in you. The anointing that is in you is true, is not a lie. And it shall teach you all things and things to come. Hello? 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 He said, I will guide you. I will be in you. You shall hear a word behind you telling you, this is the way. Walk ye in aid. Do not be like a mule or a horse that beast must be tied into the mouth and control. I'm not going to control you that way. You should know me. You, if, you, if you are in me, I can speak to you with my face. When you see my face, you will know whether I am pleased with you. I don't know whether you are following. Are you following with you? Are you following? I will give you signs, various signs that... It's not only voice you will hear. I don't know what you are following. Are you following? You, God will speak to you in diverse ways. One of the ways he taught me early in life, uh, there was a time in um, uh, Bendel State, uh, which was uh, a combination of Edo and Delta at that time. We did an exam. And the whole of Bendel, uh, two of us passed that exam. Myself and one other person from England. And it was an exam for scholarship. 
in accountants. And uh, I love knowledge. I love pursuing knowledge. I want to have an excellent, I want to be excellent in everything. And I made up my mind that I was going to go there. But at that time, Jesus arrested me and gave, I gave my life to him. And he said to me, no, don't go. What did he say to me? No, don't go. I know you love knowledge. I am the master, the head, the authority of knowledge. I will teach you knowledge by myself and the rest of them. I said, no, God. I don't want my equals to come out from university and I become inferior before them. Now ask me today, am I inferior to, any, to anybody? Am I inferior to anybody, no matter how educated they are in Nigeria? I teach them. Where they stop is where I begin. Bring them from America. Even those going to the moon and the rest of them, they don't know. It's now they are knowing, they are trying to discover. Uh, James Webb uh, Telescope and the rest of them, and so, so, so. Oh, there, it appears there is an extra extraterrestrial uh, life in the up there, and so, so, so. They want to find out whether there is a, uh, 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 the, the plant in that place, whether there are so, 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 and the rest of them. They are going. These are things we know. And they are spending years and years to discover. And yet they cannot get the truth of it. Hello? 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 So God said, don't go. I was just struggling that I will go. And then look at the voice of God. One of it is peace. So the peace that was in me was withdrawn. When your peace is tampered with, ask yourself, what did I put my hand to do or what was I thinking that peace of God is withdrawn? That is God's voice speaking to you. Hello? If you are, if you are going to do anything, if you are keen in following the leading of the Lord, you want to go into business and the business is going to be misleading, your peace will be taken. You'll be worried. Hello? Even fear. Say fear. Say fear. All of a sudden, you begin to feel fear. It has its positive aspect. Fear is telling you, you have allowed the enemy to invade your territory. Spiritually. You have breaking certain hedge. And now you become fearful. Now. If you are a good follower of God, you will go back to God. Oh God, why is this fear? And as you enter his word, the Lord will open your eyes to see that you were not prayerful at a time or you uh, fell apart in one form or the other and you have allowed the hedge to be broken and the enemy is taking dominion over you. The negative power are there. And your heart and your mind, your spirit man, are telling you the truth. Hey! Get out of the territory of fear. You are in the territory of the devil. Hello? God has not given all the spirit of fear again toward bondage. Because fear will bring bondage. But he has given all the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound what? Mind. Spirit of dominion. So even fear at a particular point is a voice telling you that all is not well. Take care of it. Put yourself in order. I don't know whether you're following. Now, if you're going through life, whether you lose your peace and the rest of them, you are galloping up and down, you don't care. Whether there is fear that is increasing, you don't fear, and the rest of them. <laughs> uh, from today, that kind of operation, God will deliver you from it in Jesus' name. I said, God will deliver you in Jesus' name. I can't, I have not even entered the message for goodness sake. I have not entered the message. But I'm sure that 
by this peace that have been brought to you. Now, uh, let me finish with, uh, with Habakkuk. The chapter one of Habakkuk's life is complaining. Hello? And God moved him from chapter one to chapter two. Stop complaining. What is it? Stop complaining. See things as God sees them. I have given you destiny, power, good things. Even though there are things surrounding you, I have made you a teacher. Habakkuk was staying in the midst of corrupt people. And today, the corrupt people in Nigeria, they are so many. But the Habakkuk believers, God said, I know what I'm doing. I have installed power inside you. Write down the vision in the tablets of your heart. Hello? And uh, I am bringing people who, that will attend your teaching, your school, your lecture. Hallelujah. And if you make it plain, they that read it shall do what? Run with it. May you be good runners for the vision in Jesus' name. Yeah. They shall run with it. They shall do what? Run with it. In chapter 3 of Habakkuk, glory. And that's where yeah, I want to end it this morning. Chapter 3 of Habakkuk. Look at the complaining prophet in chapter 1. Look at the a prophet that now begin to stay in the middle, I will not complain. I will stay in my position and I know what and what God has put in me and put it down because the, the vision shall surely come. The vision shall not lie. What God put in you shall not lie. It shall manifest in Jesus' name. In chapter 3, we saw Habakkuk sit down with his... Uh, is this um, musical instrument? What do they call it? She go not. <laughs> oh, glory. He now know that he cannot bring God down by complaining. By complaining and murmuring, you cannot bring God down. Hello? Get out of it. And ask yourself, what should I do? And let God structure you. This is what you have to do. And believe in it. And put it down. So that you'll be able to heal congregations and generations and families. Write it down. Impart people. Train up your children. Affect your children, your, your friends positively. Make impact, good impact in their life. In chapter 3, he sat with his chigionot and started playing and started playing and glorifying God. And he saw God come down. He dwelleth in the praises of his people. Blessed are the people that know how to make a, the joyful sound. Hallelujah. So he allowed God come from up, from Teman, and then from Paran, and came down to Sinai, and came with his host of angels, and then his glory filled all the earth. Hallelujah! You can praise God out of your trouble. I say, you can praise your, by praise, you can take yourself out of trouble. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A long time ago, the Lord taught me, my son, uh, when you wake up in the morning, because sometimes, in those days, I wake up in the morning, and my system is down. And my system, the system of the body will affect your heart, whether you are going to be glad or you are going to be moody. Are, are you following? Are you following? So because I didn't know, sometimes I wake up in a moody form. And I think that should be what 
it is for the day. I, I don't know what you're following. Sometimes I will get up and put my hand under my joy. Oh, no, no. When you're a Christian, you have gone past that. Anytime your husband, your friend, your wife sits down and put in her hands like this, you know that there is trouble in the family. Deal with it. That's not where to be. That's not a valley to be. Take her, take him from the low valley and take him to the top. Are you following? Are you following? So when God told me that, he said, you can wipe, erase that moody. It is not events that will dictate or mood, natural mood that will dictate who you are. You are to dictate them. I don't know where they are following. Are you following? If by the enemy came and spray moody, moody atmosphere, you say, when you wake up today, you'll be moody and you wake up and you became moody and you didn't know that a secret work had been done on you for the enemy to have dominion and you are now, he's a king over the God forbid button and you are a subject to his decree. Hey! Child of God, get out of that mood. You can't stay in that mood. Are you following? Now some time ago I never knew the value of good health and the treasure of good health when I was still a footballer. I never knew that for you to hide, have your eyes and you can see your nostrils you can breathe with it. Your mouth you can, you can talk with it. You can smell with your nose. You can hear with your ears. You can move your body. Your body are uh, anatomy and physiology. They are functioning well. I never know the never knew the worth of it. It was when I was sick that I came to a terrible state and I now knew. Oh, so I was wonderfully blessed. Not with money now. Not money. Not with money. You have your legs to move. I say you have your legs to move. You can dance. You can move your body. <laughs> you are blessed. I say you are blessed. I say you are blessed. And some time ago, I never knew the blessing. Trekking the whole of Benin City. I thought it was a punishment. But today, I know better. Yeah, the car came. The air conditioner in the car came. Sit down. Sit down. And enjoy. And I saw that I lost so many things. And I'm thinking right now how to begin to exercise myself instead of locking up myself and not... I, I don't know. Are you following? Are you following? Those of you who are trekking, you say, you, oh God, what suffering is this? You are blessed. I say you are blessed. So that by the time the car comes, you will know how to manage your life. Time to ride car, time to trek. I don't know whether you are following. Are you following? Am I speaking to, a, to somebody here this morning? Is somebody blessed here this morning? Are you a miracle living man here this morning? If you are, just stand to your feet and begin to thank him. I am content. I am content. I am grateful, oh God. Thank you for all that you have done for me. Thank you for all that you have done for me. You are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. You are glorious. You are powerful. Some people cannot eat. But you can eat. Some people's system cannot digest food, but your system can digest. <laughs> Some people, they are asking people to carry them, but you can carry yourself. Oh, glory be to God. Begin to thank him for the multifarious blessings. Whatever delay that is in your way, delay is not denial. I said delay is not denial. Oh. 
your solutions are coming. God has opened doors. He has opened gates. In the month of May, in the month of May, the grace of God abounds for you. In the month of mercy, the mercy of God abounds for you. In the month of faith, the, the month that may identify it as faith, may you be able to do all that God has laid in your heart in Jesus' name. Joshua 1 a says that thou mayest, thou mayest have the enablement, the divine capacity, the push and the boost to do what you are supposed to do. Hallelujah. And the scripture is, was asking, every living soul, Every living soul. Is there any dead man here? Is there any dead man here? Let every living soul do what? And he said, let all that has breath praise him. Let everything that has breath praise him. And you know that that breath is not only in the nostrils. Breath goes into your cells, your tissues. They all breathe. So when God says we should, everything that has but to praise him, we can praise him with our hands, with our body, because they all have bread. Are you following? Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Are you satisfied? Yeah. Are you satisfied? I have just given you a small thing. You can tap into it and begin to discover for yourself. Because when you will not discover, there is no reason why you should not be content and satisfied. Because God himself, the Father, would, is dwelling inside you. Jesus, the Son, is dwelling inside you. The Holy Spirit is dwelling inside you. The creator of the universe is dwelling inside you. So what do you need? What do you need? He said, I will walk in them. I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will not be ashamed to call them my people. And they will not be ashamed to call me. I am their God and their father. God said, have me. I belong to you. If you, if you belong to God, God will belong to you. Hallelujah! Now, this moment, this moment, you heal from somewhere. Today, you are going to raise up your hand if you are a Bini, use Bini tongues to thank him. If you are Aishan, Urobo, Isoko, Ayoroba, Awusa uh, Ibo, use your tongue, your dialect, to thank him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. It's a godliness where contentment is a great gain. A great gain. If you have God in you, you are content with the God nature in you. And when God sees it, he will reward you. He, you will profit by it. It is a great gain because you traded with his name. It's a great gain. It is great gain. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It is a thought of peace and not of evil. To give you, to bring you to an expected end. 
take note of take note of an expected end. It means that everybody has his angle of perfection, an expected end. God will move you from good to better and to the best. You are in a journey of transformation. You are moving from good to better to the best. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, God is looking for somebody to make a great, powerful shout and noise. Your days of mourning is over. Your days of weeping is over. Your days of sorrow is over. Your days of wandering aimlessly is over. Your days of you chasing prosperity is over. Prosperity will chase you. Victory will chase you. Goodness and mercy will chase you. Your God will garrison you. He will face you round with his power, protection, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. The days of vanity is over. You have entered into the power of substance. You are in and you are coming out with great substance. Oh, the days of demotion is over. You are, this is an era. We have entered into an era, seasons of complete restoration. Everything that was stolen, everything that was stolen from you, is not by might, it's not by power. God has commanded them to come back. There are some of you you be favored in Nigeria mightily. There are some of you, your favor is coming from abroad. There are some of you, you've been forgotten. And your helpers, your supporters that will have supported you, the enemy blocked them. The gate has been opened. God is raising supporters for you. <laughs> ah, the environment, heavenly environment that is about to be bettered in your life. You will become Isaac. Laughter. You will laugh to the front. You will laugh to the right hand side. You will laugh to the left hand side. You will look back and laugh. In the name of Jesus. God is enlarging your coast. He has enlarged your coast. You are going to be a powerful giver to build God's ministry. 
I say, get your, your loins. Because many of you, envelope will not be enough except check. You know? That, that check, that check is naturally mysterious. Somebody can put a check in an envelope for you. And you think it's, uh, what it be this? But when you open it, the envelope of check that God has given to you today, when you open it, you shall be surprised. Some of you that are bold enough and that know your God and do exploit, you'll be looking for what to load your tithes and pay it to God. Because the best place you can plant your seed is the anointing, the presence of God. And if you believe that, to say, oh God, I want to pay a big tithe. Is that foolishness? Is that foolishness? It's wisdom. When God sees that you want to sow a big tithe, he will give seed to the sower. So for every one of you who will say this morning, Oh God, my offering, I want to give a good offering. I can't continue to remain in this level. I want to give a big offering I, from today, I want to give big tithe. When you make that, when you have a willing mind and a willing heart, it is as if you have it, God will prepare it. And uh, a man who wants to pay tithe of one million, how much do you think the wise God will bring to him? Eh? 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 Okay. What is the tithe of 10 million? It's 1 million. Now you are mentioning 100 million. <laughs> For, so what you are asking God is that you want him to give you 100 million. Eh? 100 million tithe? So you now know, multiply it and know how much will come to you. Because your tithe, when you pay your tithe, 9 over 10 is there for your reserve. Raise up your hand. The time of poverty is gone. I prophesy on you. From now, you will receive amazing transformation. That the grace and faith and mercy of God shall deliver to you. Yours is for the receiving. Say, I receive. Raise up your hands and wave it and say, oh God, praise is waiting for you. As you bless me, I will cause praise or sacrifice in your house, in Jesus' name. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is said in the scripture, it is God that gives you power to make wealth. Stretch up your two hands to heaven and say to God, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your grace and mercy and faith, I receive the power to make wealth. Now prophesy to wealth with your own mouth. Command well to come. Command well to come. 
Command where to come, your direction. To your business, to your family, to your life. Command it. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you. Receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus' glorious name. God bless you. the Lord. It is time to give our love offering, our tithes, our wealth creation sacrifice, our welfare commitment, and pledges that we made to God. It's time to come to see Father. We appreciate you. We are grateful. Receive from us out of your love, hope, and faith, mercy, grace. Our worship sacrifices to present before the King of Kings and the Lord of of lords who have taught us the ways of life lift it up father in the name of jesus i bring your people to your hands O lord in the hands of your people are their object of sacrifice and faith touch these lives bless them and let all the prophets prophecies and prophesying profit them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let all the decrees that came from your spirit that makes you from a perfect heart, that makes your eyes to run to and fro throughout the whole earth, that makes your, you to make your strong, yourself strong in their marriages, in their businesses, and in their going out and coming in. Oh Lord, Make yourself strong in their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them abundantly. Be their shield and, their, and be their exceeding great reward. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in this room. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Jesus every day that shall go riding Double the double the heaven the blessings name and they receive life God your blessing is the to follow Everybody say because because of Jesus every day that shall go riding Double the double the heaven the blessings name and they receive because of Jesus, help me say. Because of Jesus, every day I shall not ride with you. Double the double the heaven, the best of me. I'm fine. I do not listen as it's always a part of me.
a winner in this room. Hey! Hey! Somebody tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm next to be celebrated. Tell your neighbor, I'm next to be celebrated. One, two, three. See. When you see me dance, I dance as a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance as a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance as a winner, man. Jesus.